Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb and the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Bet you the real Welcome to Sheffield for the fourth stop on the International Skating Union's Grand Prix series. The first time that a senior Grand Prix has taken place in Sheffield. 
population of almost 600,000 people and a third of this city lies within the beautiful Peak District National Park. And as we head into the ice rink, the Ice Sheffield venue, we see the MK John Wilson signs who are the host sponsors of this event. And they, along with the British Ice Skating Association, have worked incredibly hard to prepare for some of the world's best skaters. God Save the King played to the arena here. It's a great celebration for British ice skating. It has been a decade since the European Championships were held in the nearby Sheffield Arena. And even longer since the Junior Grand Prix, the John Curry Memorial was held in this ice rink. So many fans of the sport descending upon the rink to celebrate the great skating that we've seen already with the pairs and men's competitions already complete. Yesterday evening, we were treated to a win from the world champions Alexa Kneedham and Brandon Frazier, as well as Italy's Daniel Grassel, who won the men's competition. And now we see the starting order for the first event of the day, the women's free skating competition the first group of six women who will compete. And the final two competitors separated by just two tenths of a point, Isabel Levito and Mai Mahara. The, the final competitors in this competition battling out for gold and 15 points on the Grand Prix series. As well as a coveted prize money to go with it. Currently on the Grand Prix series, Heian Lee from Korea leads in the standings. She has 18 points, but the likelihood being she may struggle to stay in the top six who will qualify for the Grand Prix final in Torino next month. The winners of the other events yet to complete in their second Grand Prix assignment. Next week we will see Kaori Sakamoto, the world champion, who will compete at the NHK Trophy against Arinka Watanabe, the winner in Skate Canada. Following the first two days of competition, so many of the athletes Acknowledging the wonderful warmth and support from the audience. An audience that is not treated to seeing this caliber of skating in a live competition. So, so many of the skaters just acknowledging how exciting it is to be in the UK, not a destination that the skaters are regularly competing in and the hope being that they will be able to exploit the proximity to the capital city in London shortly after the event before returning to their respective training locations. This first group of six competitors, many of them are Olympians with vast levels of experience. Looks like Brady Tunnell, third competitor on the ice. He's much more relaxed today than yesterday in the short program. The first competitor, Ilya Sauter from Romania. Followed by Alexia Paganini. 
and return to competition for former American champion Grady Tunnell. And then very exciting opportunity for the British champion Natasha Mackay to compete on home soil. Followed by Gabrielle Dillman. And the final competitor in the group, Germany's Nicole Schott. So the first of four warm-ups today between the women and the ice dancers to follow. Five of the six competitors in this warm-up group scored short program scores in the 50s. But as with the first three Grand Prix events, potential for lots of movement within the ranks following the free skate. So you see Yulia Salter working through some inside rocker turns. And Wally jump to prepare herself for the free skate. Yulia finished as high as 18th at the World Championships in Montpellier. Nice to see the way in which she warms up the body in preparation for her free skate. She doesn't have the same technical difficulty as the other competitors. A quality skater, without doubt. And this, her first Grand Prix assignment. Switzerland's Alexia Paganini. She turns 21 next Tuesday. Hoping for a celebratory ski in advance of that in Sheffield at the MK John Wilson Trophy. She's competed on the Grand Prix stage before, not since 2019. Great to see her return on the back of what was a successful season for her finishing again in the top 10 at European Championships, that her fourth top 10 placement at Europeans. Brady Tunnell from the United States of America. Difficulties in the short program, but not altogether surprising given the great injuries that she has faced. She will have had such bitter disappointment not to be able to compete last season. Missed US National Championships, unable to participate due to the injuries that she suffered with. Great to see her back in competition. Very exciting free skate. The lyrics by Greta Thunberg. Choreographer free skate. Really interesting. As always by Benoit Richaud. And now to Natasha Mackay five-time British champion. She said that yesterday, in this short program, it was the most fun she thinks she has had on the ice, thanks to the wonderful support of the home crowd. Natasha said she felt so proud to be British and loved every second of it. Wish her the same kind of experience in the free skate. That triple is what Gabrielle Dillman hopes to replicate in the competition. She fell on that jump in the short program. You can see the bandaging to her back, color coordinated with her dress. She had blue bandaging yesterday for her short program, struggling with the back injury. She said she was utterly overjoyed to be assigned a second Grand Prix assignment. Moved to tears, knowing that she's being recognized in her return to competitive form this season. And then final skater in the first warm-up group, Nicole Schott. Last year, her first time to sneak into the top 10 at the World Championship. She had an incredible short program, finishing sixth there and making the final warm-up group. Moments like that last forever. 
to chase more successful moments this season, the beginning of a new Olympic cycle. Potentially, we'll head towards 2026, which would be her third Olympics if she chooses to continue. She attempted the more difficult triple flip, triple toe in the short program, so she continues to push herself with the technical element score, knows that that is a necessity moving forward. And remaining is Yulia Sauter in her first Grand Prix assignment, and just choosing to conserve energy as the first competitor, she doesn't want to overexert and exhaust herself before the performance. Just working through some combinations of turns to feel the eyes. Natasha Mackay, not a single negative grade of execution assigned to her short program. Seven elements in a short, nine judges, not one of those 63 inputs from the judges was in the minuses. That indication that she was at her very best. And Natasha and four of the other women now asked to leave the ice to facilitate the start of the women's free skate at the MK John Wilson Trophy on this final day of competition in Sheffield. Please now give a big welcome to the ice for our first competitor, representing Romania, Yulia Santa. Taking to the ice, the 25-year-old representing Romania, Yulia Sauter, speaking to the music, me before you. Lovely triple Saku to start. Despite some hesitancy on the entry, good triple loop. Footing, the landing of the double loop, and the jump combination. Sound jump technique on the triple toe double axis sequence. I know you 
Well, a great choreo sequence to finish for Yulia Sauter from Romania. And Yulia was frustrated in the short program. She'd wanted triple triple, couldn't manage that yesterday. She was visibly frustrated in the kiss and cry after that performance. It was lovely to see the smile across her face in the latter stages of her free skate here. You can see the physical demands of her free skate. So, so intense. Quality skater, doesn't hit a bad position and comes into the free skate without the same level of technical difficulty as we will see from others. No triple flip attempt, no triple loops attempt, but delivering near to her personal best in terms of the jump content she had. Just some mistakes laterally. This the opening triple salco, lovely air position. Lovely back outside rocker. Seamlessly transitioning out of the triple loop with a back twizzle. Real comfort on the triple style double toe. Just fatigue setting in. Forcing her to have a negative grade of execution on the three jump combo there with the double loop at the end. As I say, she finished 18th at the World Championships in Montpellier. Using similar kind of technical element score there. And I'm sure in practice the triple flip and triple loops are abundantly rehearsed, just not yet ready to be usable under the pressure of competition. Earlier on the Grand Prix series, we saw Rika Kahira, third in the free skate at Skate Canada, with a similar kind of jump content as Yulia, but just no refinement on the program component scores. Composition and awareness of musicality throughout. There's some semblance of musical sensitivity from Yulia, and the program will hopefully develop with more nuances of the music picked out as the season progresses. Just lovely to see, though, a happier skater. It's a personal best for Yulia of 112 from the World Championships in the free skate. 104 here. So you can uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the next 11 performances her first Grand Prix assignment. The next competitor, Alexia Paganini, finished just one spot behind Yulia at the World Championships in France a few months ago. But she comes into this competition with a much more difficult planned program content.
Axel to round out the jumps. Simple transitional content. Let's do our feet. Finishing the free skate with the step sequence to allow some more presentation and composition content for Alexia Paganini from Switzerland. Thank you. Representing Switzerland, Alexia Paganini. It's been really interesting now to see as a technical panel review the elements performed by Alexia, whether or not the jumps were deemed fully rotated, that will have a big impact on the technical element score. To me, a diluted composition of the program, relatively simple transitions, particularly through the first four jumps, using the relatively simple crossovers as the connecting steps, rather than some of the more difficult use of skating vocabulary there. I think that triple loops will be at least a quarter short. So I think the judge's grade of execution here, the triple saco. That was good, triple saco in combination with double toe. Maybe a little under-rotated there on the triple loop. So the blade not landing fully backwards. And that will drop the base value of the element. And Alexia, two-time Olympian, 21st in the 2018 Games, 22nd at the Games earlier this year. So she knows what's necessary for success, and I'm sure she's conscious of the need to include Difficult triple loops combinations that she has used successfully in the past. Many of the athletes who competed at the Beijing Games acknowledging the challenges of readying themselves for a new season after the physical exhaustion and demands of an Olympic cycle, an Olympic year. Such a huge life commitment that took a massive toll on the athletes, understandably. Perhaps this Grand Prix assignment will be the catalyst for Alexia to get back into peak fitness for the ISU Championships towards the latter stages of the season. Alexia's personal best comes from the European Championships three seasons ago. She posted 124 in the free skate. So far this year, 108 is her best. She's just referencing that competition in the Kiss and Cry as she chats with coach Michael Huth. <laughs> 102.26 for Alexia in the free skate. Second on the free. But the lead that she held over Julia Salter from the short program is enough. She stays ahead by less than half a point. Now, an extremely talented and formerly very successful skater who has struggled with injury. And that part of the reason she finds herself this place after the short program, the free skate. She's the, the thinker statue from Rodin, a statue in a garden looking at the weather for a decade. 
Partridge Becomes Alive to Save the Garden, a free skate based on discussions on climate change. <laughs> Triple loose. Covers with a triple loop. for another triple loops. You can just see the lack of training in Brady now. You can see really setting in. America's Brady Tennell, she said after the short program that she has more to do out there and she didn't know if she would ever get to compete again. It seemed last season, like event after event, she had to keep posting updates to say she, unfortunately she wasn't ready, the injury was still too problematic for her to be able to compete. She was scheduled to compete at the Japan Open and then that was taken away from her because of the lack of preparation time and you can see in the performance here in Sheffield, 
obviously still unable to get the mileage of run-throughs under her belt to be competition ready. That said, what a fabulous composition, what consideration has gone into the construction of the program as she is hugged by her coach and choreographer Ben Wari Show. The thinking behind it being the Rodan statue, the statue in a garden, looking at the weather for a decade, coming to life to save the garden. And then with the words of Greta Thunberg, just so much has gone behind the concept as we see one of the most successful jumps in the program, the triple loop. And we just sincerely hope that Brady will be able to stay fit and healthy through the rest of the season and amass more run-throughs in training ahead of the US National Championships in San Jose in January because I think potentially this has huge scope for massive program component scores. Unfortunately, the mistakes in the short program, despite the quality of skater that Brady is, you can see they're not really getting the turns clean and the combination of turns in the step. She's such a quality skater, but the mistakes make it hard for the judges to really reward her in the components as you see the strapping round the left ankle. Indication that she's still suffering. Just hope that Brady can see past the numbers that are given to her for this performance and that the skating world will have enjoyed what I thought was a brilliant program potentially. She's got a couple of months now from here till the US Championships. And she will vie for selection to the world team for the States. Brady Kenwell, representing the United States of America, has earned the increased rating. 96.69. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks' time at the Grand Prix Espoo. Very short. Healthy and happy training. Till then, for Brady Tunnell. Please now welcome onto the ice, representing Great Britain. And now the five-time British champion, Natasha Mackay. The 27-year-old had more fun on the ice yesterday in the short program than she's ever experienced thanks to this home crowd. for triple loops. Just a single, it's not a triple that she's as comfortable with. E -S -P -R -E -S -S. Love, sex, ladies, no regrets. E -X -P -R -E -S -S. Love, sex, ladies, no regrets. Two triple loops back to back, the second in combination with double toe.
This was the last thing on her skating bucket list to compete at a senior Grand Prix and to do it in front of a home crowd. She needs to soak up every second of these precious moments now. And she's cheered on by the home fans with Union Jacks aplenty in the audience. She said she felt so proud to be British yesterday. Loved every second of the experience in the short program. More pressure on a free skate. But I'm sure she'll be relatively satisfied. The triple loops is her most difficult triple. She struggled with that. The pop at the beginning of the program could have paved the way for multiple challenges later on, but she held it together and managed four triples in her free skate. And having competed at the Olympic Games in Beijing, she considered retirement, but delayed that retirement due to missing competitions and experiences due to COVID. Great that she can celebrate continued career with the Grand Prix at home. Just a little bit of a shortage of rotation on the landing or the triple loop. Potentially there on the triple toe as well. But such an inspiring story mentioned it in the short program, but it's worth retelling the fact that this is a woman who didn't land a double axle or triples until she was 19 in a sport where the assumption is that is an absolute necessity because she's a young age. And so Natasha really does serve as great inspiration to many others in the sport, knowing that you can compete in an Olympic Games representing your nation without having landed your first triple. 20s nearly, and that such a testament to her hard work, and indeed coaches Simon and Debbie saying she's one of the most focused and committed athletes that they've ever worked with. She had real engagement, the eye line and presentation throughout the performance towards the judges was evident from start to finish. And now you can see fully relaxed. Now that the competition is over and I'm sure we'll be treated to seeing Natasha in the gala exhibition later today. 97.58 is the season's best for the British champion.
Coach Simon saying they'll take that. And we look ahead now to another former Olympian, Gabrielle Dillman from Canada. Comes into this event struggling with a back injury. But over the moon to have been allocated this second Grand Prix assignment. Normally her trademark triple toe, triple toe, just triple double here. But gets the triple loops that she missed in the short program. Stays up on the flip, which she struggled in. Let's get Canada. think on her feet and put a triple toe in, later changing the plan program content. Canada's Gabrielle Dillman completes her free skate at the MK John Wilson Trophy.
in this more successful for sure than in Skate Canada. She stood up on five triples in Sheffield, just four in her home Grand Prix in Mississauga. Showing that she is on a positive trajectory towards the Canadian National Championships. She vies to be the sole entry for Canada at World Championships in Japan next year. We've seen Gabrielle just acknowledging the challenges of elite level competition, the pressure of representing your nation at the highest level. And she was just overjoyed to return to form in the short program at Skate Canada. This was unfortunate. She's got one of the best triple toe, triple toe combinations in the world. But perhaps some competition nervousness at the start of the program. Better with the loots than in the short program yesterday. And Gabrielle, somewhat like Brady Tanel, just acknowledging that she wanted to be back with the audience in her atmosphere. These athletes have spent their lives cultivating their craft, devoting endless hours to the pursuit of great skating. And the assumption, and often when a skater struggles to replicate the form that they've enjoyed previously, that leads to retirement. But like Brady, who suffered with injury, Gabrielle just relishing the chance to be back in the competitive arena. Seeming to appreciate the moments now, perhaps more having suffered some challenges in previous seasons. And after the short program, Gabrielle saying that it's her first time in the UK, hopes to explore before returning to Canada to train with longtime coach Lee Barkell. She was second in the short at Skate Canada and dropped to 11th in the free skate there. A similar score, sometimes challenging to keep the program component scores as high when competing in the first group. So she maintains her position at this stage for Gabrielle Dalman from Canada. And now to the final competitor in the first warm-up group, Nicole Schott from Germany. She attempted a more difficult combination than she sometimes used in previous years. Yesterday with a triple flip, triple toe. She intends to start her free skate with triple flip again today. Quality through the triple flip, double toe, double loop. And another very solid triple flip.
developing into a really strong skate for Nicole Shot. <laughs> Double axle to finish the jumps. Well, a beautiful skate for the six-time German champion, Nicole Schott. And what a brilliant program to the unique arrangement of Bohemian Rhapsody. And Nicole has worked with former world champion Carolina Kostner from Italy on the choreography this season. And Carolina undoubtedly one of the most beautiful skaters to grace the planet and you can see that influence in some of the stylization for Nicole here. She doesn't, doesn't have triple triple in the free skate, doesn't have triple loops, but good jump quality, solid fundamental skating skills. Just a great advert for maturity in presentation. The way that she presented her free skate here Just again, similar to what's been discussed with the likes of Daleman and Tanel, great to see a skater returning to the Grand Prix series and offering continued progress in different aspects of the sport. This was lovely, triple flip, double toe, double loop. This coach looks on, Michael Huth again. We see her work through the triple. I'm not sure if this was fully rotated. Yeah, some of the rotation there done on the ice for sure. But she acknowledged her enjoyment of being in Boston for Skate America. She posted online about her love for the city of Budapest where she competed at the Budapest Trophy in the Challenger Series. And with two Olympic game experiences under her belt already, it seems like this is an athlete who's just relishing the experiences of representing her nation around the world and absolutely delivering when it comes to the requirements on the ice as well. Good flow out of the landing of that triple toe. Comparatively easier technical content than that which we will see from the top group. But I think just the triple loop will be the only minus grade of execution element of the 12 performed in her free skate and potentially this will push towards a personal best score for the six-time German champion. TV came from the Challenger Series in Warsaw last season of does indeed come close and Nicole says wow to 121.03 and that is a very comfortable lead of the first six competitors and applies some pressure to those above her and she will at least replicate the seventh place that she had in her first Grand Prix assignment in Massachusetts at the Skate America Grand Prix there, the standings, really close competition between the bottom four competitors. Nicole Shot leading by some sizable margin. 
As we look ahead to the final group of six competitors. Young Yu wanted to conserve her energy. Discovered after the short program that she was quite sick with a high fever. Last in Sheffield. Gabriela Izzo from the States. And the incredibly popular Katarina Kurakova from Poland. Georgian Anastasia Kubanova. The world junior champion. Popular skater, Mai Mahara from Japan, will be the final skater thanks to the lead that she had after the short program. And the skaters have six minutes of warm up time now. As I mentioned, the first competitor, Young Yu, I thought would be sorely disappointed with the short program score and performance we discovered that ahead of the competition she was quite sick with a high fever and considered withdrawing from the competition she's already in Sheffield making the commitment to compete in the short program said now she's not focused on the result she tends to take it easier a long season ahead if she is to compete again at the world championships this year So the assumption would have been that Young Yu would have been vying for a Grand Prix final placement following the third place she had at Skate Canada. But now health being her priority here in Sheffield. The 21-year-old student at Harvard, Gabriela Izzo. She had a great short program. She knows that she needs triple triple. Didn't include that in the short program. Lay down a clean skate otherwise. She said she is just loving her Great Britain experience. Like Kashira Shimada, acknowledging that she saw a lot of sheep en route to the ring. Presumably traveling from Manchester Airport through the beautiful Peak District to Sheffield. And the next competitor, Ekaterina Krukova. Such a popular competitor on the circuit. She heard another training mate in Italy using the music of her short program. Every competition she recognizes it was a right choice for her. And she entertained everybody so brilliantly yesterday. Completely different short program theme for Anastasia Gubanova. Her short program was about a girl who falls into a coma. Much more intense delivery. The skaters open to choosing a theme that they wish to portray on the ice. She will skate to this theme. Music from Slumdog Millionaire for her free skate today. Zippo Levito, just gorgeous in her short program yesterday. Her mother is a clinical embryologist who emigrated to the States from Italy in 1997. Levito is named after Michelle Pfeiffer's character, as a boy Danjou in the film Lady Hawk. The final competitor and the leader after this short program, Japan's Mai Mahara. 
The last time that she podiumed at a Grand Prix was back in 2018. Now, hoping to secure a win here in Sheffield. A woman who has struggled with so much injury and bad health. Really kind young woman. She's donated her hair three times for the creation of wigs for those who've lost their hair. It's amazing to hear of such a young skater so mindful of others when skaters tend to be so selfish in their time. The sport dictates such life commitment. It's hard to focus on anything else when you're competing at this level of competition. But the skater on your screen, Gabriela. Ezo manages to do just that, balancing her academics at Harvard with her elite competitive performances. The final 60 seconds of warm up. And knowing the challenges that Young Yu has had leading into the event whilst here in Sheffield eager to conserve every last drop of energy left in her before the four minute free skate she's about to undertake. <laughs> so Bolivito has just a beautiful posture. Very difficult triple loops, triple loop combination she will hope to replicate in her free skate the penultimate skater to take to the ice. Thank you. Maya Mahara just doubling out on the loops there. Should have fall on a triple toe as well within warm up. She did say she was incredibly nervous for the short program. Hoping she will calm as she Leaves the ice now. Now Victor Pfeiffer, coach to Young Yu here, gives some final parting wisdom to his student. Please welcome our next competitor onto the ice, representing Victor Pfeiffer, Young Yu. The skater who was sixth at the Olympic Games comes into the free skate in sixth place here in Sheffield. That largely due to the illness that she suffered whilst in the UK. We wish her all the very best for her four minute free skate. Opening with an easy looking double axle, triple toe. This is a good start for Young Yu with the triple loops.
Big combination of triple loops, Euler, triple Salco in the second half of the program. An impressive skate for the 18-year-old Young Yu, particularly knowing what we know following this short program, how poorly she has been here in Sheffield to be able to deliver so many triple jumps. And you can see now, understandably, visibly exhausted, and she had to really rely upon her numerous years of experience to get through that free skate. Just 18 years old, but so, so much experience both on the junior circuit and on the senior circuit. Didn't attempt the triple axel, which she used to open her program at Skate Canada. The element was downgraded in Mississauga. Assume she wasn't able to commit to that physicality here to open the program. seven triples in her free skate. And it looked like she was quite systematic in her approach, conserved energy right through to the final triple flip and then the double axel. From a component's perspective, potentially better skating skills than Nicole Schott, but presentation of the program not delivered with as much conviction as the German skater who leads at this stage. And I think the composition, the unity of the elements, a little watered down in its difficulty as she got through the program. This was good, triple it's Euler, triple Sacco, quarter rotation short, I think, on the triple Sacco there. Yeah, the rocker counter twizzle combination of turns within the step sequence, that one of the level features. And here, last triple, the triple flip, which I think was fully rotated, just touching down with the left foot. Trying to reload to squeak out a double toe, but just a single at that point. And beyond this competition, and we will to recover in time for the latter part of the season. And who knows, the skate that she's laid down here could help her climb up from sixth place after the short program contend for a podium place and she would really need, we assume, two podium placements to qualify for the Grand Prix final next month.
So five points higher than her score from Skate Canada. And 130.15. Seoul Korean entry at the MK John Wilson Trophy in Sheffield. She moves 10 points ahead of Germany's Nicole Schott. The 21 year old from the United States of America. She was eighth at the Four Continents Championships. She had a great short program yesterday, hoping for more success in her free skate. Straight into the triple loop and double axle sequence. First mistake, just a single flip. Memories seamless, and a capricious one of that. Memory wants a needle in and out, up and down, hither and thither. We know not what comes next or what follows after. That's the most ordinary moment in the world. Such as sitting down at a table and putting the inkstand towards one. Single that time the loops.
some intensity in the facial expression at the end of the free skate for Gabriela Izzo from the United States of America. She started so well, the triple loop double axis sequence, and then triple loops, then the triple circle. And after that, things started to unravel for her. Poses the question about style of jump technique that we've seen tweaking and changing over the past generation or so of skaters. Gabriella has huge elevation, lots of speed, lots of attack into the jumps, which when delivered and successful, facilitates a really good grade of execution. Potentially that makes it harder for her to keep momentum for the triple-triple combination, which she acknowledged after the short program. She knows she needs. This was real quality, lovely air position, great extension on the landing of the double axe at the end of the triple loop. Good elevation and another posture throughout the landing position of the triple loops. And at this stage, with the Sako, things were looking really positive for Izo. We've seen a move towards longer, lower triple jumps that keep flow to facilitate triple triples. The height and elevation that Gabriella manages on her triples, really impressive, but may make it a little bit more challenging to keep speed and momentum for a second triple jump at the end of it and that will be something that we necessitate for her to scale the ranks internationally. She's gone a little under the radar so far. She was the US Junior Champion in 2019, fourth place at the American National Championships last season. There's no doubt this a woman with incredible talent and just total respect to her as a pre-law student at Harvard University. That just demonstrates what amazing time management she must have. Hundred and eleven point one eight for Gabriel Izo. Next sevens in the program component scores for the American. She drops a couple of places and slots in in third place. Well, the next competitor. I saw online somebody described her as the sunshine of skating. Just such a smiley bundle of energy, exuding so much joy on the ice. Poland's Ekaterina Kurakova. It's a combination she's used successfully many times. Triple loops or their triple flip. And the second triple loops.
here. They've tried really getting behind their favorite triple loop, double axel. Defy anyone not to smile through that step sequence as Ekaterina Kurukova from Poland finishes her free skate in Sheffield. Brilliant choreography by Massimo Scali, former world medalist in ice dance for Italy, and just an inspired choice. The Up soundtrack, a delightful film for a delightful skater, and such a perfect vehicle of choice for her free skate with the balloons across her dress. Just great teamwork in the creation of that free skate. And Ekaterina explaining after this short program that the support she has felt here in Sheffield has been incredible. She said she feels already like a winner no matter what the result thanks to the support she has felt. And she is greeted by Lorenzo Magri her coach off the ice. Katarina explaining that some people had traveled from Poland to watch her here in Sheffield. And testament to the delightful character she is, she felt a little guilty about it, wanted to pay them for their travels to support her. And I think more and more fans will increase in her army of support following the performances here. Triple loops, Euler triple flip. She fell on that at Skate America in her first Grand Prix. It's little touches like the shrug of the shoulder in time to the music, which should force the judge's composition score to really elevate. She doesn't have the same speed and power across the ice as some others, so potentially the skating skills will be a little lower. Like Katrina said. She feels like a winner already. What she gives to an audience is invaluable. To be entertained on the ice with the constraints of competition and the demands of the sport is something that few can manage well. We saw Denis Vasiliev delighting the audience in Sheffield with his skate yesterday and yet he didn't have the same level of technical difficulty as others. Skating skills aren't as honed or speedy as those that are left in the competition. But she may have just given the most memorable performance of the women's event. Remains to be seen. I don't think she cares too much as we see her reaction to the free skate. She had 115 
in the free skate SK America, but 129 at Lombardia Trophy. I think this will be somewhere in between, and that it is. 126.98. Katarina Kurukova dips just below, less than a point behind Korea's Young Yu. Anastasia Gubanova, the Georgian who finds herself in third place after the short program, skating to the Tikas theme for her free skate. Big combination to start, triple loops, triple toe. Such a long running glide on the landing of the double axle. Big triple, triple, that time triple flip, triple toe.
a, a clean skate, green boxes, and all of the uh, elements in the free skate for Georgia's Anastasia Gubanova. Main maintaining her third place after the short program, increasingly likely following that extremely strong free skate performance. This her first Grand Prix assignment. She said after the short program that she knows she can do better. I suspect she will be hard pushed to do much better than that in the free skate. Two big combinations, the triple loops, triple toe, and the triple flip, triple toe in the second half of the program. So achieving a boost in value. And the Latika's theme music reflected in the choreography. She had constant hand movements, indicative of the style that is necessary for this. You can see the, the clear shortage of rotation there. I think that was the triple loop. Technical panel deeming that as just a quarter rotation short. Others might have considered it under-rotated. Fine line in the decision upon how much rotation is left on the ice by the technical panels. Triple flip, driving up into the triple toe. Sometimes some variations between the calls from event to event. And the implications on the technical element score can be pretty massive, depending upon how the elements in the triple jumps are called. In the women's event particularly, it seems. And as the technical panel review, elements or some of the 12 elements for Anastasia to see the total score dropping level three for two of the spins a level two for the flying camel so some comparatively easy points dropped on the spins needs 124 to continue leading the others and she's done that third on the free skate but overall it is enough for Georgia Gavanova to lead, and you can see she now realizes that she will leave Sheffield with a senior Grand Prix medal. Congratulations. And now the second to last competitor, the world junior champion, Isabeau Levito. Quite stunning in the short program. And she will use My Sweet and Tender Beast as the music for her free skate, hoping to add more silverware to the silver she achieved at Skate America. <laughs> Difficult combination that we have seen so far. Triple loop, it's triple loop.
impressive. Triple Lutz, Euler, Triple Sarko. That was divine. Just such an all-rounded package from the junior world champion. Difficult technical element, planned program content, executed well. Beautiful skating and a knee action that facilitates good flow. Beautiful spins, just fantastic all-rounded, complete package. Choreography reflecting the musical phrase and form. And it's music that reminds me of Sasha Cohen, who used this as the music for her short program back in 2002 at the Salt Lake Olympics. And interesting to make the comparison with that other American skater who was an Olympic silver medalist. Is it a reflection of the, the judging system now? So much more transitional content, so much more difficulty in the composition of this program required now to be successful in 2022. Beautiful Ina Bauer. Just gorgeous rotational position in the air and landing position. Judges want very good height, very good length, good takeoff and landing. Triple flip had an exclamation mark in the short program. Just a little bit of a question about the back inside edge, which she should take off from. Isabel turn. 16 in March next year. She speaks English, Italian, and some Russian. She started the sport at just three years old with her mother being a skating fan. And how proud she must be now to see her daughter having won the World Junior Championships, now contending for titles on the Senior Grand Prix as well. I suspect that this would be a comfortable new personal best. Lovely to see her coach who was standing ringside looking so proud and so rightly so. The amount of work that has gone in to creating such a well packaged skater. 136.99 her personal best up to this event. Beats that comfortably. 143.68 for the 15 year old. And she skyrockets into the lead. And potentially vies for the title at the MK John Wilson Trophy in Sheffield. The final competitor in the women's free skate. Winner of the short program, 23-year-old Mai Mahara. She said she was so nervous in the short. She 
There's a bit of an apprehensive warm up as well. I hope she can skate cleanly here as she prepares her free skate. Axel to start. Let's get triple that is triple toe. Difficult series of turns as entry into the triple circle. Better triple flip than the short program. So triple toe. <laughs> the light from the crowd to the triple is double toe, double loop. Joyful scenes in Sheffield for Mai Mahara from Japan. Just a fascinating story of a young woman who has been through so much, hospitalized for prolonged periods with juvenile arthritis. She showcased such potential for the future of Japanese skating. But despite all her challenges, didn't make the Japanese Olympic team and at the age of 23 now returns 
to the Grand Prix. It's back in 2018 when she last medaled on the Grand Prix stage. And whether she wins or not, she is guaranteed, I'm sure, with a performance like that, to return to the podium. And just enormous respect, knowing all that she has been through to deliver a skate like that, especially knowing that she was so nervous in their short program. And the apprehension and the weight as the last skater will have placed huge pressure upon her and she absolutely delivered. A couple of the jumps slightly off axis that the opening double axis you can see just landing in a slight inside, rocking over to the back outside edge, fighting here, rocker, counter, three turn entry into the triple salco. And you can see the cam upon her face early in the program, which was such a contrast to the jubilation and the smile in her choreography sequence towards the end. Again, working hard through the triple loops, double toe, double loop. She has now been assigned to the Winter Universiad for the Japanese team in Lake Placid in January of next year, alongside the world champion Sakamoto. She will desperately be hoping to qualify for the world team for Japan. It's six seasons ago when she last represented Japan at the World Championships. She potentially returns to that kind of form where you saw her place fifth in the 2017 Worlds. But I think, again, delighted to see a skater so joyous with their skate. And ultimately, that really should be the most important thing for my Mahara. Interesting to see the judges' analysis of the program component scores higher in skating skills, it looks like, for Mahara over Isabel Levito. That probably thanks to the increased speed and ice coverage that she has, but lower on presentation than the American. How will she fare? 145.20. She wins the free skate, and she's about to find out that she wins the title. There will be so many fans of this young skater who will be just delighted. Tears of joy. Well, that concludes an emotional and fabulous women's free skate. All of the skaters on our screen now, the top six delivering some of their very best personal skates. Wow. Well, that concludes three of the four disciplines. Local skaters working hard now to fill any holes. Skaters I recognize from British ice skating, competitors who will compete in this rink at the British Championships in a few weeks' time. Just filling any holes that they can spot as we look at the top three from the women's competition. Anastasia Gabanova takes bronze in her first senior Grand Prix. And she too is just ecstatic when she discovered that she would come away with a medal from her time in Sheffield. World Junior Champion, just stunning, a line aesthetically so beautiful in every shape that she makes. Isabel Levito takes a second silver medal on the Grand Prix Series this year, potentially and very likely I am sure now qualifying for the Grand Prix Final in Italy next month. But it was my Mahara 
the winner of the short program who extended her lead with a wondrous free skate. She will come away with 15 points from her win here, 18,000 US dollars. We will see her compete again in two weeks' time at the Grand Prix Espoo in Finland. Memories, I'm sure, that she will cherish and savor forever. The smile on her face through the change edge spiral as part of her choreography sequence, lifting the whole crowd as too did that reaction. So that concludes the women's event on Ice Free Surface now, and we return with the final competition, the Ice Dance Free Dance.